Okay. Good morning. I am Councilmember Vincent Gentili, Chair of the Committee on Oversight and Investigations. We welcome you all today. We are joined by committee members and council members Bill Perkins from Manhattan, from Queens, Daniel Drum, and Rory Lansman, and uh, the sponsor of 119B, Jamani, Councilman Jamani Williams. Welcome you all to uh, the committee this morning. We are here today to vote on proposed intro 119D, sponsored by Council Member Williams, a bill that has already been heard twice by this committee, first in May of 2014 and again in June of 2016. The reality is that lawsuits against the police department have dramatically increased over the past decade. According to a report by the controller, the city paid out over $216 million in fiscal year 14 to resolve claims involving the police department. The existing practice in place is costing the city financially in part due to the lack of cross-checking and comprehensive analysis by departments of multiple uh, data across many agencies and administrative units. Currently, the law department, the controller, the police department, the Civilian Complaint Review Board, and the Commission to Combat Police Corruption all collect information on police misconduct through complaints and litigation claims. However, there is limited coordination and analysis on how to use this information to improve police practices and ideally reduce costs to the city. This bill does not make information about individual police officers newly available. The reporting by the law department that this bill requires uh, compiles information that is already public. The bill would require the Inspector General for NYPD in consultation with the Law Department, Police Department, Controller, CCRB, and CCPC to review information on police misconduct and develop recommendations to the disciplining or training or monitoring of police officers. To facilitate this review, the Law Department would be required to publish information on civil actions every six months. This, in essence, is a reporting bill and has no negative intent. Instead, by establishing a collaborative and transparent system with appropriate timelines to review information, Intro 119D seeks to spot ways in which the police department can fine tune their policies to help police officers possibly with better and more relevant training. The bottom line of this proposed modus operandi would be to use this formalized cooperation to evaluate the data already collected in order to improve police practices and to identify patterns to assist in the early intervention, benefiting the department, civilians, and New York City taxpayers. So with that, I'd like to hand it off to Council Member Williams for his opening statement. Thank you. Councilmember Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Intro 119 uh, was introduced February 26, 2014. As was mentioned, uh, we had two hearings on this. Uh, we are now up to 119D as in David. The bill will require the Inspector General for the Police Department in consultation with the Law Department, <coughs> the Police Department, the Comptroller, the Civilian Complaint Review Board, and Commission to Combat Police Corruption to review information on police misconduct and develop recommendations related to disciplining, training, and monitoring of police officers. To facilitate this review, the Law Department will be required to publish information on civil actions every six months. In addition, the Police Department will be required to study determinations by judges that an officer's testimony at a trial is not credible and report on the value of such determinations in reducing improper police con conduct. How long, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the legislative process uh, has been very valuable and uh, very uh, long, but we received a lot of information. Uh, we got information about transparency issues. This is not about making police officers uh, look bad. We are trying to find ways to make uh, the department better. There are legitimate concerns uh, that this addresses. Most importantly, as was mentioned, this doesn't provide any new information. It takes information that's public and tries to compile it in a useful way to find patterns where we might be able to intervene before officers get into deeper trouble. As far as I see this, this is actually to try to provide assistance to the department, assistance to officers, whether it is a precinct or a command. Uh, we want to find areas of concern before they rise to a larger level. 
and we have the added benefit of hopefully preventing lawsuits uh, that we're spending a lot of money on. I do want to make a comment uh, about the PBA because it is a great example of how they make this conversation much more difficult. There have been two hearings on uh, this bill. Uh, the PBA hasn't come to either one. They haven't provided any testimony except for right now. And I know uh, many of my colleagues have received some calls uh, from the PBA telling them to oppose this. I have never seen one piece of legislation that deals with policing that the PBA has supported. And they very rarely, if ever, engage in any discussion around these bills. They simply say no. That then leaves it us up to the people who will talk with us to find the best legislation that we can put forth. This legislation doesn't harm any individual officer. It doesn't provide any new information. It can provide already public information into a user-friendly way for us to just see if there's any patterns that we can uh, stop, any patterns that are negative that we can stop before they go further. That's all that this does. And still, the PBA wants to push back and make it difficult for people uh, who want to do the right thing. And I think that's a very disingenuous way of proceeding with this discussion. I will, again, I have never denied the PBA an opportunity to discuss issues with me. I've never denied them, or tried to deny them an opportunity to come talk before us when we're giving testimony. I think it's better if they take those avenues and discussions. When I passed the Community Safety Act, I actually sat with the PBA and other unions, and we changed that bill based on what they said, the things that made sense. Of course, they didn't support it, but we did take, in what they took, take into account things that they said. We are happy to do that, but please be sincere in the discussion. Simply saying no all the time, not even saying no early in the process, waiting years after when we're on Part D to try to input, uh, put your thumb on the scale here is a very disingenuous. And in the state that we're in now, we need sincerity in this discussion. So with that, I just want to thank the chair uh, for his support of this bill and making sure that we got uh, to where we are today. I thank the speaker, Melissa Margarito, uh, Commissioner O'Neill, the NYPD, DOI, advocate Cynthia Conte Cook from Legal Aid Society, Juhan Kang from the Community United for Police Reform, Michael Sasitsky, NYCLU, uh, staff Rob Newman, Kelly Taylor, <coughs> and Jeff Gwab, who is no longer here, Michael Toomey, my legislative director, and my former legislative director, uh, Nick Smith, who was stolen by uh, the mayor. Um, this is a very pe good piece of legislation. I want to put on the record that this legislation is not intended to take any power away from uh, the current inspector general or any future inspector general in the DOI or the DOI itself. With that, thank you very much, and I hope my colleagues vote yes. Thank you, uh, Council Member Williams. Are there any other members that want to speak on the bill? Okay. It's not seeing none. I, I just want to, uh, oh. first of all, thank uh, uh, the council member for uh, this piece of legislation and the essence of what its intention is to be and would uh, request that I be added uh, as a uh, co-sponsor to it, if, if it's appropriate. And I think that this is touching on one of the most troubling aspects of city government uh, in terms of police community relations. And this is, is a very, very important step in the right direction uh, to give uh, the city some sense of confidence that uh, this is not a matter that is uh, being subject to benign neglect or, in other words, being ignored. So uh, in that regard, again, I want to be uh, considered as a sponsor or a supporter of this legislation and uh, would like to go forward and hear from the rest of the folks that are here in terms of some testimony. Thank you, Council Member. I'd ask that the roll be called. William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on Oversight and Investigations, Introduction 119D, Chair Gentili. Vote aye. Drum. With congratulations uh, to my colleague, Councilmember Jamani Williams, on this excellent piece of legislation, I vote aye. Lansman. Aye. Perkins. Again, uh, I vote aye, and congratulations to uh, the sponsors. By vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstention, item has been adopted by the committee. It's a great day for New York. Okay, with that, the uh, hearing and the meeting is closed.
long as we have. Yeah, I mean, I'll stay and I mean, as long as it's okay. Um, Thanks. I'll see you upstairs. Yeah. I gotta go to the kitchen upstairs. Yeah. Here, take this. I don't want. I don't want to. You don't want it anymore. No, but actually, you know, I, I, I do want to be. We're asking them now to make a list, compile a study regarding judicial determinations. Police officers are not credible. Who gets to do that? The law department has to do that. I think so. These names are <laughs> dotted in the map. <laughs> hey, Kelly? Kelly? What am I supposed to do with this? Oh, the police department. Yeah. Thank you. 